Alright, everyone. Men who are ruined by after dating a Kar Kardashian. After after dating. The devil works hard, but Kris Jenner works harder. The momager of six has built a multi-billion dollar empire by keeping the Kardashian-Jenner name in the media. But the one tactic that works best is high-profile relationships. Guy who started it all, Kris Jenner, yo. Since people can't help but be overly invested in celebrity couples. Kardashian relationships are often short-lived, and they tend to be a bit one-sided. I know, right? I thought I thought she was I thought she was gonna just stay with. I don't want to spoil it. I don't want to spoil it. There have been countless men whose careers or personal lives suffer due to their association with the family. This is Kanye as well. Guys, I've never seen a Balenciaga like. Is that like some sort of? Look, it looks like a you know, a tooth guard. Like if you were um. And like grind your teeth in your sleep. This is known as the Kardashian curse. Today we are going to look at the stories of men whose lives may have changed for the worse because of their relationship with a Kardashian, starting with Ray J. Ray J was a teenage R&B sensation. In 1997, when he was just 16 years old, his single Let It Go peaked at number 25 on the US. Damn, bro. Yeah, we're over 20 weeks as well. As Billboard Hot 100 after it appeared on the Set It Off soundtrack. He can Set it off. That's one way to go viral, man. Oh, man. Continued this momentum in 2001 with his second single, Wait a Minute, featuring rapper Lil Kim, which peaked at number 30 on the Billboard Hot 100 and helped. Yeah, he's, he's, his songs are just staying on the charts, charts, man. 16 weeks on that one as well. Helped establish Ray J as a mainstream R&B artist. He also ventured into acting, earning roles in popular sitcoms like Moesha and The Sinbad Show. He Guys, I must have been too young for these ones, right, guys? He had every quality to be a multifaceted superstar in Hollywood. Then he met Kim Kardashian. During a brief musical hiatus, Ray J began dating Kim in 2003 after meeting her while she was working as a stylist for his sister, Brandy. The couple dated for three years, during which they made an explicit tape that would later catapult Kim into the spotlight. Isn't always this stuff that gets him uh, famous, man? I gotta do something like that. I probably wouldn't. However, at this time, Kim was just another valley girl whose only claim to fame is being the daughter of the lawyer who represented O.J. Simpson. So the public was generally unaware of their relationship. They separated sometime in 2006, and Ray J continued seeing the success of his recently released third studio album. Ray J, man. Guys, I, I do not know who Ray J is. I'm titled Ray Guys, has anyone heard of Ray J? Let me know in the comments below. Radiation, featuring his most iconic single, One Wish. But it was after their breakup where things got bad for Ray J and great for Kim. But first, a word from our sponsor, Aura. Have you ever Googled your name and seen yourself on one of those strange sites that has way too much information? Guys, all those, all those sites are fake, man. I wonder if, uh, I wonder if they're real, though. I wonder if they could actually come up and uh, like uh, you know with some info on me or something guys about you i hope not it feels pretty weird i'd rather have that stuff not available to just anyone who's looking for it data brokers are making tons of money selling your information to robocallers and spe oh that's where the data collection things and that's how they're profiting from it guys that's how they're selling our data man Oh, man. Hammers. Aura can find the data brokers that are sharing your information, and these brokers are legally required to remove your info if you ask them to. Guys, that's so I... That's why I get scared of, uh, you know, accepting, uh, cookies, bro. However, they make it very difficult to do so. That's where Aura comes in. Yeah, we put a bar he in here for, like, how, how long the ad's showing, guys. That's legit. And submits opt-out requests for you. All, all, all of them need, need to do this. All of them need to do this. You can try Aura free for two weeks using my link, aura.com slash patrickcc. Aura also does so much more to protect you, like antivirus, VPN, password manager, identity theft protection, credit monitoring, and much more. The best part is you get everything at one affordable price. I really like the password manager. I have tons of different passwords and I like to keep them all in one place. Plus, they will alert you if your passwords have been compromised. Let Aura protect your- That's good, that's good. Anyone else get notifications like that, man? I, I, I have a bit torrent. 
Because my dog's just chilling on the side of me, looking at me for like the past two hours. And BitTorrent says, oh, there's recently a security breach here, a security breach there, man. Your information and keep you safe online. You could let people continue huh. to exploit you and profit off your private information. He always has such a dark room. I don't think he has, uses the ring light at all, guys, when he films these. And, or you can go to r.com slash patrickcc to start your two-week free trial. Link in the description. Thanks, Aura. Kim began working as a stylist for her childhood friend, Paris Hilton, frequently accompanying Hilton to events and parties. Paris had a tape leak in 2004, three years earlier. Convenient. Even Paris as well, guys? I did not know, bro. Because when I was growing up, they were just like... The, the 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 biggest stars, man. And I, I didn't know what that even was at all, you know? Because I was just growing up, bros. I was just growing up. Conveniently, at the same time, Sorry, her reality right TV here. show, The <laughs> Simple Life, first debuted. The tape and show combined... Yeah, she got a ch chihuahua just like me, yo. That's a way smaller chihuahua, though. My chihuahua is... A She's right here. She's bigger, man. Launched Paris into fame. It just so happens that the Kardashian family had a reality TV show on the brink of releasing in 2007. Conveniently, in February of that year, the explicit tape of Ray J and Kim made in 2003 titled... Oh, I thought it was Kanye and Kim, guys. Special Collector's Edition. Oh my gosh. Did they... Who was selling this stuff, guys? You think they had licensed it or something, bro? Kim Kardashian Super... Including over 60 minutes of behind the scenes footage, including never before seen. Ooh. Okay, okay. Star leaked onto the internet and garnered significant public interest and media attention. Kim Fox. And then just propels her uh, career, man. You know, this, this definitely looks like a, a magazine from way back then as well. Filed a lawsuit against Vivid Entertainment for distributing the film, but this was all a part of the plan. What the plan? And her mother took Paris Hilton's strategy, and it worked flawlessly. Kim addressed the tape on the Tyra Banks show and insisted that she didn't want it out there. However, she dropped the lawsuit just three months earlier and settled for $5 million, giving Vivid permission to market and sell copies of the tape. Sales from the film were... Snap, they... <laughs> they got rich off selling it. ...reportedly generated nearly $1.5 million in revenue in the first six weeks. The controversy surrounding this tape was used to... Somebody got rich quick. Some insider got rich quick. Some, how did they even get the tape, guys? Did she, like, give it to, like, sell it or something? Market season one of Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Episode one. I've never seen this show. Included. But it, it was, uh, you know, I was like, I was in high school then. A large segment about her tape and Kim's feelings about the leak. It was talked about heavily throughout season one. And this show launched Kim into becoming a household name in Hollywood. But nobody. So it just starts with the, the sex tape, it seems, bro. But now, now it's a little bit different of a climate because everybody has the OnlyFans. But it helps uh, propel the, um... Helps prepare the, prepare, propel the career as well, guys. Nobody knew this was calculated at the time, and Ray J looked like the bad guy for filming this material. But temporarily, it did help his career. His 2008 album, All I Feel, debuted at number 7 on the Billboard Hot 200, and he had his... Yeah, that's the highest it dated so highest far. Highest charting single ever. With oh, okay, even another one, with bro. Sexy Can I, peaking at But I totally thought it was uh, Kanye and Kim that did it on camera, bro. Number three. He then tried to compete with Kim in the reality TV world with his dating show, For the Love of Ray J, which bro. lasted two seasons and averaged... What is that, bro? Is it not a family? It's just like him dating a bunch of girls. Snap. Over 2 million viewers, but that was Not his bad. final peak. His next reality show was canceled after two seasons and his music career dwindled. After not hearing a Ray J song for three years, we got blindsided by the controversial track, I Hit It First, featuring Bobby Brackens in April 2013. This song was very obviously about Kim, especially looking at the music video. The song peaked at number 51 on the Billboard Hot 100 and gave Ray J his first Hot 100 entry in years. Then- Oh, snap. Ray J reported not bad, not bad. Sent so, Yeah, he's been doing music for a while, guys. Ten years without, or uh, quite a while without, you know, getting success. And Kanye, a check that totaled his... But he just kept trying, and he got one, he got one. ...profits off the sex tape as a wedding gift, further taunting them. Although on the surface, this seemed like a W for Ray J, it really just made him look jealous and desperate to get back into the spotlight. 
Yeah, but it worked. Aside from appearing on various reality shows over the years, Ray J's legacy is mostly known today not as an early 2000s R&B star, but rather the guy who made a tape with Kim Kardashian. Hey, if he became a household name, which he kind of did, doing that, then it is what it is, right guys? It worked. I don't think he had that and unsuccessful. Ray J was just a pawn to get Kim into. I don't think that he had that unsuccessful of a career, guys, right? Introduced to Hollywood, and he fell right into the trap. However, Reggie Bush would become the blueprint of how the Kardashians use relationships to line their pockets. Reggie Bush was the most dominant college football player in the country during his time at the University of Southern California. He played a key role in helping U.S. Oh, Reggie. Oh, he's such a cool football man. C win back-to-back -back national championships in 2003 and 2004. In 2005, Bush won the prestigious Heisman Trophy, awarded to the most outstanding player in college football. Posting a Reggie Bush... As I've never heard of that trophy either. Highlight video was a cheat code for a million views on YouTube in 2006. Sheesh, bro. How do you... How do you... Man, nobody subbed to him after 1.7 million views, bro. 59 subscribers somehow still. He was basically the first- Bro, what? Usually they get a couple hundred. First athlete to become a so- After a million, bro? What is going on? Social media celebrity before he got- Nowadays it's a couple thousand. To the big stage. Just a few days before entering the NFL, he signed a $1 million per year endorsement deal with Adidas. Then more endorsements with Pepsi, Pizza Hut, General Motors, and Subway. The New Orleans Saints drafted Reggie with the second overall pick in the 2006 NFL Draft. Reebok had received over 15,000 orders for Bush's Saints jersey just one week after the Sheesh, bro. All for a jersey? The draft. Reggie's popularity and social media presence made him the perfect candidate to be Kim Kardashian's boyfriend. During that offseason, Reggie attended the 2007 ESPY Awards where he was introduced to Kim through a mutual friend. At the time, Kim was still dealing with the aftermath of her tape with Ray J and was gradually elevating to superstar celebrity status. They began dating shortly after and their relationship was on full display and keeping up during season two. In episode nine, Kim shoots a sexy calendar for Reggie. Whoa, whoa. Claiming it's for his Kim. eyes only, even oh though the gosh. TV camera is recording the entire shoot for millions of fans at home. But then I know, right? Chris distributes the calendars for public sale. Obviously, this situation was scripted for TV. This was never going to be exclusive to Reggie, and they knew the calendar would be sold to the public. They Hey, if, uh, uh, if I had money back then, I might have. He just needed to fill out 30 minutes of television and twist the narrative. Men dating the car. Yeah, that was a good little plot, you know. And that that's one reason why we don't watch those shows, bro, because the scripts like they, they they be staging stuff like that, brothers. Kardashians have to understand that nothing about their life is private, and their girlfriends will twist their real lives to fit the format of reality television. Reggie was a humble and quiet guy. This one paparazzi interaction alone, you could see how much Kim loved the spotlight, and Reggie didn't. Reggie, 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 Reggie. That he's a humble guy. Reggie. Not being the most humble, I mean. Uh, it's it's humble though. He's not like being disrespectful. He right, just yeah. doesn't want the camera and all the freaking look at all that man. Oh. I cut the light off. You can have like a. Oh, it'd be hard to see at that point, right, guys? Remember all those flashy lights back when magazines were a thing. Reggie, what's up? Peace sign. <laughs> this type of attention every time you try. Like a flash mob, bro. It seems annoying. To go out to a restaurant will wear down on someone. Reggie's brother chimed in on their relationship many. Now they got delivery apps, so they could just get a delivery nowadays, right, guys? Years later. Do you ever wish that you were Kim Kardashian's brother-in-law? <laughs> never, never, never. I never really liked him. So. You didn't? No, like not at all. What? Guys, if they get a delivery to the house, you gotta have like your security gate, gate, have, like a um, custom code you can like enter in, just so, and, and it changes every time for them to like put it inside the like. Inside the, at the inside the door, but not outside of the property. Just like open the door and put it in, like right at the like the first step, and then close the door. All right, guys. Why not? No, she was she was too much. She was too she was too much for the family. We couldn't. How, how so? Just too just too much. Despite this, it seemed like the couple were destined to settle down together. The anticipation of the wedding made for great TV. Guys, I really thought Kim and Reggie. Guys, has she had a kid with any of them? Yeah, I don't. 
He doesn't really mention that. He just seems so in love. But one day, everything changed. Due to the demands of Reggie's football commitments and Kim's continued exponential success, the couple broke up for the first time in 2009, citing their desire to focus on their respective careers. It makes sense. If, you, if you're focusing on your career a lot, it's hard to maintain a relationship. You know that, guys. Season 3 of Keeping Up documented their fallout and how Kim was dealing with the breakup. You look like a slob, to put it mildly. And this place is... Oh, what? I deserve to be a slob. Yeah. This is how people live when they're, like, really depressed. Did he edit the voice? He, he must have... So maybe I'm really depressed. Season 4 showcased Kim wanting to get back together with him, which they did briefly get back together in 2010 before calling it quits again. The entire rise and fall of their relationship was made for TV, but never showed Reggie's side of the situation, which is crucial to protect the Kardashians' image. Cut out- Hey, it's, it's about the Kardashians, right guys? But dang, that's a business move and a half. All the things that maybe make them look bad. In fact, they often try to- They, they only wanted the camera on themselves at that point. To make the men look like the weak ones. For example, a press release after their breakup said, Kim is going to be fine either way. She travels the world and has created brands. He just can't keep up. Which is true. Reggie could not keep up with all of the failed brands that Kim was creating. The Kardashian card, a prepaid debit card that was taken off the market within a month due what the heck is that? To a firestorm of criticism. The card had extremely high fees and was marketed to teenagers who are less educated on personal finance. Then there was Kardashian Color, a nail polish line with 14 different colors with goofy names like Chloe Had a Little Lamb and Court is Ready for a Petty. Can't forget Quick Trim, the dieting supplement that promised you to read. It looks like something you put like an ad scene on TV thing on it. Your weight but... loss. Guys, they're just starting business because businesses because they're so rich and you know seeing if they they work they probably uh, ended up having profit and just just continuing because they didn't get projected sales or, but they still made profit right guys I don't know maybe maybe not goals well it was bogus and they got hit with a five million dollar lawsuit Jeez. then there was kim's sketchers shape up sneakers in which advertisements claimed that the shoes would help people lose weight and strengthen and tone their butt legs and abdominal muscles because of the deceptive ads sketchers had to pay a 40 think she's getting sued for every single suit thing it seems two out of three so far million dollar settlement after losing a class action lawsuit now reggie said himself that he failed to live up to expectations on the football field during their relationship critics said he was overhyped in college and his kardashian fame made him even more overhyped which could be true but he had a solid career he became a super bowl champion with the new orleans saints and no even i know reggie bush and i don't even pay attention to football that much 2010 and then went on to play some of his best football in the three years after the breakup with kim reggie was inducted into the saints hall of fame in 2019 while kim's brands and relationships were bad not bad were failing the reality show writers needed storylines for season four of keeping up luckily chloe kardashian and lamar odom became official extremely fast which ended in him almost losing his life what lamar odom decided to skip college and had guys they're always dating like um football or baseball or basketball stars bro straight into the 1999 NBA draft. Yeah, man. He was selected like... as the fourth overall pick by the Los Angeles Clippers. Standing at six foot ten, Odom's ball handling ability, passing skills, and court Another guy another guy that I actually know. Vision were remarkable for a player of his size. He was highly regarded as a teammate and valued for his unselfish play and willingness to sacrifice for the team's success. This unselfishness and consistent production landed him on the Los Angeles Lakers, where he played alongside Kobe Bryant and Pau Gasol helping the franchise win a championship in the 08-09. Dang, Kobe's not the tallest, man, but he still had an insanely good run, man. R.A.P. Kobe. Season. During that offseason, Lamar met Khloe Kardashian at a party for a fellow NBA player, Ron Artest, in August of 2009. With her, I was like, if I do what I normally do, I'm gonna lose her. And if I lose her, I think it's going to hurt a lot. Right then and there, I knew. We were together every day. It only took three weeks before the couple took their next step in their relationship and got engaged. It may seem like it's a quick Guys, why did they get engaged so quickly, it seems, man? The wedding to Guys, I'd wait years and years before everyone else. But uh, trying to do take a step like that, brothers. Chloe knows what she wants. The proposal was recorded and aired on an episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians, where Lamar began regularly appearing. Just nine days after getting engaged, Lamar and Chloe tied the knot in September 2009. After the couple was officially married, they signed a deal to co-star on a new reality show. Snap, what the heck? I never heard of this. Chloe and Lamar, which would focus on their life together and the first year of their marriage.
there's still whole businesses doing this sort of stuff. This relationship was great for business. Like many initially involved with the Kardashians, Lamar played great during the 2009-2010 NBA season, helping the Lakers secure back-to-back -back championships. His oh, snap, he's on a roll now, guys. The excellence on the court continued into the next. Hey, but the last guy didn't uh, have the worst career after breaking up, guys, right? season and he was awarded uh, so that's what the video's title was called the nba sixth man of the year the couple's reality show chloe and lamar debuted on e in 2011 which averaged about the same viewers as keeping up during this time change bro um, lamar and you put kardashian on it and he gets you kajillion views chloe were one of hollywood's more prominent power couples chloe may have even taken a bit of spotlight away from kim fans were just obsessed with her and lamar together they'd create a his her fragrance line unbreakable love by chloe and lamar along with various brand deals and sponsorships sadly guys i actually like febreze anyway i'm a huge fan of febreze and that one in the that one looks like it'll smell real good with the like sparkles on it like all the all febreze is just so awesome bro i actually have a can right next to me right? it was all about to come crashing down Lamar's what? reputation as a reliable role player in the nba was dwindling from 2011 to 2013 he was traded twice the initial trade from los angeles to dallas is where odom felt his career was over that trade from the lakers basically ended my career and purpose i was never really myself ever again being in la the structure the people i knew it hurt leaving i had great memories with the lakers with kobe and Powell. that was a special I still made a couple million and could buy mansions though. special time in my life now labeled a journeyman odom was experiencing career low statistics on the court and his personal life was even worse around mid 2013 cheating rumors consumed media headlines while chloe initially supported her husband she filed for divorce in late 2013 after oh what oh what no months of speculation about Lamar's substance abuse issues. Lamar oh, man. details one dark night in his book. While on a bender of cocaine and ecstasy, he grabbed Chloe forcefully in a fit of rage and said, I screamed, out of my mind. You trying to embarrass me in front of my friends? I'll effing kill you. You don't know what I'm capable of. Lamar was a Hey, Lamar. Lamar being savage. Violent right? addict. He also said his biggest regret was that I couldn't keep my d in my pants or the out of my nose. These substance abuse issues led to a DUI and a stint in rehab. Their toxic relationship was happens all the time in uh, Hollywood, right guys? Constantly making headlines. It was a reoccurring segment of many Keeping Up with the Kardashians episodes, but Lamar didn't want to get divorced. He avoided ending his marriage for nearly two years before finally signing the papers. This all reached a tipping point one night where Lamar nearly lost his life. In October 2015, Lamar Snap. saw the company of two women working at a Nevada brothel, planning a four-day stay where he spent $75,000. At Love Ranch, Odom would have a near-fatal overdose. He became comatose and was placed on life support in a hospital in Las Vegas where he suffered 12 strokes and endured six heart attacks. Dude, that's so much, bro. I actually had a, I had a something like that happen to me, guys. As his heart stopped twice, and doctors told friends and family to prepare for the worst. Fortunately, he regained consciousness and was... There we go, there we go, that's good, that's good transferred to Los Angeles to begin his recovery journey. In the aftermath of the incident, Chloe withdrew her request for a divorce. She stated that she had not reconciled with Odom, but wished to assist him in making medical decisions during his recovery. Come early 2016, Lamar was making strides in his recovery while Chloe provided emotion. I didn't have to go through this much, bro. Cause that's, he, like, he, he, he's getting help with walking and stuff. I, I didn't go through something that rough and financial support, remaining by his hospital bed day and night. Once Chloe felt as though Odom was back on his feet, the divorce was finalized in December of that year. Through it all, it does seem like Chloe genuinely cared for Lamar. He was clearly not ready for this level of fame, and they obviously rushed into a relationship to capitalize on the money and ratings it would generate. Turns out, hey bro, out his demon. Not a good thing for the business of it, the whole show to do all that, you know what I mean? Man's got the best of him. But he wasn't the only basketball player to fall victim to the Kardashian curse. Kendall Jenner has dated at least seven different NBA players, prompting a famous meme in the NBA community, Kendall's starting five. Now, a lot of NBA fans like to indulge in the idea that... Okay, this one, this is the one that, you know what I mean? Kendall ruined these players' performance, but it's an extremely weak argument. Because many of these situations can be attributed to just normal ups and downs in a ball player's career. George
Oh, right. Or, or a streamer's career like mine. Jordan Clarkson dated Kendall in 2016 and had a slight dip in performance the next couple seasons, but bounced back and has been playing better than ever for the past three years. The same can be said for Kyle Kuzma, who dated Kendall in late 2018 to mid-2019, had a slight dip in performance the next two seasons, but again bounced back immensely for the past two years. Ben Simmons briefly dated Kendall in 2018, but didn't see a major Hang, is that he has to make these segments short because there's so much decline in his performance until 2022, four years later. Devin Booker played great the entire time he was dating Kendall. Phoenix Suns fans just like to blame her because they got outplayed by the Bucks in the Never seen a sponsor by PayPal on any NBA players until the now, guys. What the 2021 NBA Finals. Blake Griffin is probably the one who had the worst downfall after dating Kendall. In summer of 2017, Blake separated from the mother of his children, Bryn Cameron, thinking he was going to get serious with the 22-year-old model. During their time together, Kendall was frequently spotted courtside while Blake was playing for the LA Clippers. In September 2017, a source told People that the relationship was nothing serious. Blake is doing everything in his power to make Kendall his girlfriend, but she's keeping him at an arm's length because she knows how busy she is. Which makes you wonder she doesn't look that, like, happy to see him play right there. Wonder what type of mixed signals were happening that Blake would leave his family for a fling with a model. Was he being let on, or was he just that irresponsible? Unfortunately, when Blake was traded from the LA Clippers to the Detroit Pistons in January of 2018, the cross-country move essentially ended all hopes for a long-term relationship with Kendall. Now, his career declined from there, mostly because of injuries. It's really his personal life that suffered after that. He built a reputation for being somewhat of a joke based on how he chased Kendall, who never really wanted him. Many have even speculated that Blake is the father of the adult star Lena Rhodes' first child. Also, don't have kids with NBA players. That's another one. <laughs> this Dang, bro. <laughs> Striking similarities. This rumor has led to Griffin becoming a meme within the NBA community. Guys, I, uh it looks like night and day, man. Unity. Blake was a superstar player at one point for sure, but his downfall seems more so because of his injuries rather than being tainted by the chaotic lifestyle. Dang, just one injury kind of like destroyed the career, man. The Kardashians. Seeing how successful Chloe and Lamar initially were inspired Kim to get a basketball husband for herself, Chris Humphreys, which ended in Chris suing Kim for using him for publicity. Entering the NBA in 2004 as the 14th overall pick selected by the Utah Jazz, Chris Humphreys was highly regarded as a promising basketball prospect. However, he was just- Guys, I did not know about this relationship. Okay. He averaged 4.3 points and 3 rebounds per game in his first 5 seasons, but he also only averaged 11 and a half minutes of playtime. Chris was a decent player, but nowhere near the superstar that the Kardashians aim for. However, in 2009, Chris began playing for the New Jersey Nets. His playtime doubled, and so did his stats. Not too oh, long. Okay, okay. Getting the, the good. Long after, he met Kim Kardashian through. Another tall, freaking through a mutual friend. Kim was photographed sitting courtside on multiple occasions at the Barclays Center that fall, and though it was obvious the two were dating, they initially kept the status of their relationship a secret. But things escalated much quicker than we could have ever imagined. Seven months after meeting, Chris proposed to Kim at her home, placing rose petals on the floor that spelled out, Will you marry me? Kim on, on a show, bro, keeping up with the Kardashians as well. Kim said yes, and season six had a whole new plot. The massive and glamorous wedding. It's, it's like it's scripted. <laughs> I think cost a whopping ten million dollars. Dang, bro, that's more than my life. I'll make my life probably. A ceremony. No, no, no. We 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 can't say that. We can't say that because then we'll jinx ourselves. Was filmed for the four-hour E special. Kim's Fairy Tale Wedding, which aired on television two months later. The couple quickly capitalized off the attention, appearing on The Ellen Show where they renewed their vows. It's been five weeks since your wedding, which is a long time for reality TV stars, so it's time to renew your vows. Unfortunately, 72 day marriage, oh my god. Ellen's one 10 million for a 72 day marriage. It was all for show, man off comment foreshadowed their early demise because Kim filed for divorce after just 72 days of marriage for better for worse for richer for poorer in sickness and in health until death do us part those are pretty serious promises let alone a 10 million dollar wedding Kim said I hope this marriage was forever but sometimes things don't work out as planned which makes you wonder what the plan was while Kim seemed content with parting ways Chris revealed his own statement that he was not done fighting for the relationship. I love my wife and I'm devastated to learn she filed for divorce. Kardashian fans immediately took Kim's side. They said, He knows, he knows he's not gonna be on the show no more, that's... 
one reason, right, guys? Might not be the only reason, you know? That Chris was always rude to her, and they could tell through the highly edited and scripted TV show that it obviously wasn't going to work out. For example, he came off as abrasive, abrasive towards her, like he was jealous of her, even though they were together. Oh, snap. Example. I'm just saying I want to raise my kids and live in LA. That's where I'm from. That's all I know. And by the time you have kids and they're in school and all that, like, no one will probably care about you, let's be honest. Obviously. That was kind of rude. Obviously, this is a very rude and mean thing to say to your girlfriend. However, we don't know how much of this conversation was edited. What if right before this, Kim said, well, you're never going to be a Hall of Famer, so you should just quit. They also point to another clip during the wedding rehearsal. When you are surrounded by a family that directs your every move, directs the words that come out of your mouth, controls every situation to make it benefit them the most, something as small as refusing to shave your mustache feels like a victory. On top of that, media outlets are posting headlines that say, Chris Humphreys mocks Kim Kardashian's weight on show. This is what he said. No! No! Get in a lot of wedding cake! I'm pretty sure- Guys, I remember her, like, weight transformation she posted. I wonder if he's gonna mention that. Everyone in his- she posted, sorry. History who's tried to lift up another human grunts and says how heavy they are. In response to this divorce, Chris filed to annul the marriage, citing that it was fraud. And it's annul the marriage. Annulment. I didn't even know you could do that, bro. What the? Is a legal ruling that erases a marriage by declaring the marriage null and void and that the union was never legally valid. Kind of confusing, but. Dude. This is the first time I've ever heard about something like that. Basically, Chris was arguing that this marriage was all a spectacle for entertainment, where oh, he was- I thought it should- I thought it was something that, like, uh, would void the divorce. ...fully dedicated and serious the entire time. I would never go through something and do something that wasn't real, or I didn't believe in, so I can really only speak for myself in terms of that. The pair reached a settlement in court in April 2013 after Humphreys dropped his annulment request, and their divorce was finalized shortly after that. In 2017, Kim reflected on her reasons for marrying Humphreys, saying at the time, I just thought, holy sh I'm 30 years old, I better get this together, I better get married. But I knew on my honeymoon it wasn't going to work out. Chris expressed that he was in a dark place for a year after the split because he felt like the world hated him. I didn't even want to say anything to defend myself because it felt like I couldn't win. Although he wasn't really much of a star player before he married Kim, afterwards he started playing some of his best basketball. However, this failed marriage and the public siding with Kim shattered his reputation and overshadowed any of his career highlights, especially considering he was replaced with Kim's new superstar boyfriend. Kanye West. Okay, this is like the longest relationship that I know that they had, guys. Kanye and Kim's fallout is easily the biggest and most catastrophic of them all. Guys, I didn't know until they, they had a fallout. I did not know they had a fallout. It must have been when, uh, that I was homeless when it happened, guys, because they've been together for as long as I know. Their relationship alone, like the only thing, the only relationship I know Kim had, could be its own video. Well, yeah, Trap Lore Ross did it in three and a half hours. How Jeez. However, Kanye is trying to save his children from being used as pawns to become the successors of the Kardashian empire. Kris Jenner molded this formula of managing her kids' careers and capitalizing from their success. Ye doesn't want that to be done to his kids, because it has already begun. In November 2021, Kim Kardashian launched a joint TikTok account with her eldest daughter, Northwest. Kim and North accumulated more than 130,000 followers. Jeez, man. ...in less than 24 hours. People are now becoming fans of the nine-year-old. They claim she is exactly like Kanye, confident and unashamed of her attitude. Now, TikTok clearly states that the minimum age for a user is 13 years old, but they don't use age verifications when you sign up, plus Kim making this a joint account makes it seem like North has restricted access to it. We know this isn't true when North went live on TikTok by herself on her own personal phone. She ran into Kim's room where she said... Look at that house, man. Oh my god. Mom, I'm all my life! Okay, bye. After multiple other instances uh, oops. of North posting on TikTok, Kanye told Kim he didn't want her on the app, but she wouldn't listen, so he went public. Hey, everybody, I just got off the phone with Kim. I told her to stop antagonizing me with this. You think she was on TikTok herself or something, guys? This TikTok thing, I said it's never again. I am her father. I know y'all don't respect fathers and the idea of family and media tries to promote something i said i'm not allowing my daughter to be used by tiktok to be used by disney all of us have been on tiktok it's completely understandable why a f tiktok's so addicting man 
Guys, would you approve of your kids using TikTok? Father does not want his child to use that app, but it's the frustration that Kanye omits and his very serious tone that makes people label him crazy and controlling. Kim disagrees. That's what the media paints him as. Season says Kanye is attacking her. Kanye's constant need for attacking me in interviews and on social media is actually more hurtful than any TikTok North might create. As the parent who is the main per- Wait. What, what, what is- Provider and caregiver- I didn't see her attacking, uh, Kim. Giver for our children. I don't I'm know. Doing my best to protect our daughter while also allowing her to express creativity in the medium that she wishes with adult supervision, because it brings her happiness. However, just one year later, and everyone agrees that Kanye was right. Northwest linked up with Ice Spice and shared a video of them. Okay, this is the one I know about because it was just re very, very recent. Themselves and some friends singing along to Boys. Yeah, there's a lot more he could have mentioned here, but it's just such a long, so long of her. Their lives have been documented, bro. The Liar Part 2. North had previously posted a portrait she drew of Ice Spice weeks prior. Kim likely arranged their encounter so that the daughter could meet someone she looked up to, having done something similar in the past with Jojo Siwa. The video didn't initially spark much controversy, as many felt the encounter was fairly innocent and playful. However, days later, things went too far after North posted a TikTok cosplayed as Ice Spice, wearing an outfit many deemed inappropriate for someone her age. Amid immense backlash, many questioned Kim's parenting, ultimately forcing her to delete the video. Kim said, As soon as I saw the words, meaning the lyrics North was singing, I was like, oh no, we're taking this down. Which proves that one, Kim does let her 10-year-old use TikTok without supervision, and begs the question, why was she letting her daughter hang out with the 23-year-old rapper anyways? Well, because one month later, Skims, her company, launched a campaign surrounding Ice Spice, and this was the perfect controversy to help sell some clothes. Guys, Ice Spice is like the next biggest thing around, bro. Kim also agreed recently that Kanye was right the whole time. You know, and then I saw on the internet, it's like, Kanye was right, you know, he, and, and maybe he was, you know, in that instant. Wait, they're still together? Maybe if we put my family on display, or yours, or anyone's in front of millions. I thought they broke up, guys. It would be just as messed up as theirs. Life is extremely complicated. To blame these men's downfall or depreciation on a single relation. Uh they, he didn't mention anything about like Kanye, not much about Kanye himself, but this is about Kardashians, right? Relationship seems drastic. Not to mention these relationships and family complications are edited, manipulated, and sensationalized for our entertainment. I'm not sure if the Kardashian curse is real. It definitely- Maybe, maybe not. Partially. He somehow made a 25 minute video about a family I don't care about. Very entertaining. Hey, man. <laughs> Would you be willing to do part two of this? Yeah, there's so much. I saw a couple of articles last week about Kim supposedly dating Tom Brady, and I was like, please don't let this be true. Thankfully, it was slash isn't. She probably just planted this, this story for hype. Kardashians are a type of family you see in a GTA parody. What? Hey, G GTA is kind of hyper-realistic. I mean, not really, though. The devil works hard, but Chris Kardashian works harder. Made me laugh for, for five minutes straight. Yeah, it's Chris Jenner, yo. But yeah, guys, that's going to be the video. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, later, guys. And check out original video in the description. Uh, I like stream everything on Twitch. Like, comment, subscribe.